is cool. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host. Khadija. <laughs> yeah, I'm bouncing up and down today, y'all. Just so you know. So y'all hit me up and like and be like, uh, what is wrong with you? Are you <laughs> no, I'm on my bouncing ball. You guys, I'm on the um a mission. I've I've got to get healthy. I'm, I've got to get healthier. Okay, so in the morning is part of my routine to be on my exercise ball, and that's what you're seeing. Okay, so if it's distracting and annoying, I'll try not to bounce so much. Okay, so please forgive me, is what I'm trying to say, and I'll keep it in check. But what I wanted to really talk about today was, you know, there's a lot of us that are um, having children. This is regardless of it, it crosses all color lines and things like that. Um, and we're really just not ready. There are so many of us that are emotionally wounded that it's like if you really think about it, how dare us bring children in the world when we are emotionally unstable ourselves. Um, and I know everybody wants someone to love. Someone to hold. Okay, I won't go there, but I get it. I get it. Um, some of us use a child for that uh, reason because we're not emotionally stable. Those are things that when you get grown, you have to admit to yourself. Like I had to admit that to my to myself. I had to admit that um, my emotional state or lack thereof maybe uh, caused me to make a lot of decisions that I may not have made had I been more emotionally stable. Okay? Now, if I can admit that, and I think that I have done pretty well and, you know, as a parent, um, but there has n no reflection either, you know, just because she's a good person. So it could have went all bad. So, but my point is, there's some people that are out here having children and you know it's going to be bad. Because emotionally, they are just retarded and they're emotionally too unstable. And then what happens is they end up being adult children. Okay. Emotionally wounded, devastated and basically um, toddlers in adult bodies. And we see a lot of this, but we normalized it to some degree, like, oh, a person's having a bad day or they're on their period or whatever reasons we use to justify, or he's tripping because blah, blah, blah. Whatever reasons we use to justify, most of it has an origin in their childhood. And I'm finding out a lot of children that have been abused by adults, their parents, their foster parents, their school teachers, their school counselors, their siblings. And unless they're even aware of what abuse is, then they probably live lives of adult children. Hmm? Well, you might say, y'all pushing back. I get it. Okay, what, what does that look like? This is what the hell it looks like. The symptoms that we develop as a result of what happened to us run the gamut of psychiatric and stress-related disorders. From substance use, disorders, and other addictions to depression, phobias, anxiety, personality disorders, sexual dysfunction, Intimacy disorders, overactivity, eating disorders, compulsive behavior, and obsession. These are all, damn it. Okay. These are all symptoms. Did y'all hear what I just read? Or shall I do it again? Whew. From substance use. Psychiatric and stress-related disorders, 
other addictions to depression, phobias, anxiety, personality disorders, sexual dysfunction, intimacy disorders, overactivity, eating disorders, compulsive behavior, and obsessions. We will be the first to agree that not all of these problems in all cases have their primary cause some kind of dysfunction in our family. Okay? Alcoholism, schizophrenia, certain kinds of depression, some forms of anxiety, and some types of obesity all seem to have well-documented biological roots. So we can say that if you have any of those former things that I just, the latter things that I just named, then it's probably, you know, it can be hereditary. Okay, now, but it is curious to us that in all of our years of doing therapy that we have encountered a few, if any alcoholics, for example, who did not also come from dysfunctional families who were not also reenacting that dysfunction in their own current family system. So when they encountered people who had been involved with a crazy family, more than likely when they were when they saw them, they extended that party onto their families. Okay, not knowing and not conscious of it, and and, and basically the partners that they chose were basically to look for a corrective outcome from the situations that they had before them. So, but we won't go there right now. Right now, we're just going to stay here. In fact, we can think of two people who came from healthy um, healthy families, but seem to inherit the biological predisposition to become hooked on alcohol, and they handled the problem in a very functional way. They both said to themselves, I think I'm getting addicted to this stuff. They talked to their family and friends about it, and then they sought help to stop the addiction. The difference for most of us is that we're way too damn dysfunctional to do something like that. Now, tell the truth. How many of your junkie friends or your alcoholic friends have said, you know, and really been serious about it, you know, as a couple or as a, you know, I'm messed up, you know, or whatever, and I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get help. And you talk to your friends and you have the support system and y'all begin to analyze. Yeah, yeah, I, did, I do see your pattern escalating and yada, 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 yada. No, most of us don't even have those kind of healthy support systems. It would be great if we do. And I'm not saying all. I said uh, some, but not all. So some, but all. Some, but not all. Okay, anyway. The symptoms that we develop have certain characteristics that seem to hold true for most adult children. You know want to know what those symptoms are? Part of our denial system is all part of our denial system, number one. We deny every damn thing. Deny, deny, deny. Right? Male, female. Deny, 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 deny. Two, give us the illusion that we are in control. Wow. Three, started out as a normal response to some perceived stress, meaning the behavior that we're exemplifying, you know, just started off as a normal response. Four, form as a way of protecting ourselves from a pain that we as children had no power to remove. Five, are about the denial of feelings. Six, our intimacy and relationship blockers. Ooh, our intimacy, these are symptoms, intimacy and relationship blockers. You know, I'm not talking about people that can just go through the acts of self, sex and self. I'm talking about the folks that actually have a problem with intimacy. Hmm. And it's so. It, it's a they, they they don't know how other than to have sex. They don't know how to really emotionally relate to someone. What about shame? Hmm. Is that a part of it as well? 